Sandra talked about just electric stuff, and pitch number one is a heater that's fouled to the backstop. Yeah, I thought we might get triple digits on that first pitch, but it was 99. <laughs> and definitely too. get it up there. Yeah, I'll complement that fastball with a big breaking ball, so you got to really hunt the fastball if you're a hitter. Good numbers for the sophomore Jackson Beeman, who had a good game against Illinois in their midweek matchup. He led the game off with a home run. Three for four with a couple runs knocked in back on Tuesday night. Nice cool evening here in Nashville. Pitch stays high. Two balls and one strike to the leadoff man. Close, but inside. Three balls and a strike. As we talk about a lot for Carter, man, he throws strikes, locates that fastball well. Everything else just seems to fall into place for him. Yeah, just got to locate the fastball. I think that might, might have actually been a strike if Espinal was able to hold on to it, but that's a good ex execution of how much that ball is actually moving. I mean, it's a hard fastball. It's, you know, 98 all the way up into the hundreds, but it's moving a lot too. So as a catcher, sometimes get it off the thumb, get it off the, the heel. It's not, not a fun ball to catch. Count runs full on the leadoff man for Mizzou. Payoff pitch from Carter. Back over the press box, they'll do it again. Those early evening shadows over most of the field. The right field area is in sunshine. Everybody else pretty much in the shade at this point. A little bit of the infield. Payoff one more time. High for ball four and a good start from Missouri. Jackson Beeman draws the leadoff walk to start the night. Yeah, nice A-B there for Beeman. On these Friday, or sorry, Thursday games, first first game in the season, it's always so important to get out ahead early. I mean, it's a, it is a race for that momentum. Anytime you can get guys on and find a way to get them in early, just kind of grabs that momentum in that dugout and try and ride that through the rest of the, the weekend. Senior third baseman, Trevor Austin, the hitter, trying to hold up on a pitch up and went around one strike. Well, for four last time out for the senior from Jefferson City. It was three for five in game three against Kentucky last weekend with a home run. He's already matched his career best with those eight long balls. One strike count with Beeman at first. Right around the plate, but ball one. Ball on a strike. That was a good looking pitch. Yeah, it looked pretty good. That one on the outside corner we saw Pitched last batter on the, the inside corner. Home plate umpire David Savage. Looks like a little tight tonight. Came back with a slider to make it one and two. Carter out of the stretch. Short lead at first for Beeman. Runner on the move. Swing and a miss for strike three. And safe at second. First steal of the season for Jackson Beeman. And I think they're going to call. I think they're going to call him out. Yeah, I think they're going to call interference. It's a nice job by Espinal just throwing right through Austin. Yeah, it went right in the middle of the the base. So two outs. In, yeah, it wasn't intentional. It just looked like he he swung on that outside corner and kind of keeled over. A nice break there for the Commodores. It really was. Beeman would have been at second. Had the base stolen, but the momentum of Austin carried him across the plate, and Cobbler's got the benefit of the call. Here's Caden Peer. Four-game hit streak for Peer, including two for four against Illinois. A long drive foul. Pulls that one beyond the stands on the right side. Interesting roster and lineup assembled by Coach Carrick Jackson. Some veteran players, a lot of young guys as well. Out on strikes. Had him wait. South Carolina series, so just trying to get those bats back on fire. Sophomore R.J. Austin at 356, a swing and a miss. Second year player from Atlanta. The Commodores have used him a lot at first base, back out in center field with Austin for playing first tonight. High and inside, one and one. You go back to that South Carolina series, and you hear Tim Corbin just talking about, you know, wasn't happy with the play. More than anything, just it was uncharacteristic of 
of their play. And it wasn't necessarily that they got beat. Yes, they, they did, they got swept, but it was more so just they didn't look like themselves. And sometimes when, you know, you might get beat, but you played really well, you can kind of live with that. But when you, you don't play like you know you can, that's the most frustrating. So yeah, these Commodores just trying to get back and feeling like they can. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff man, R.J. Austin. Long look in by Rustad, sending in the sunshine. This one popped up, second base, battling the sun, Garcia. The right fielder, Beeman, comes in, and he makes the catch one out. Communication there for Missouri. The sun in that part of the field. Yeah, you saw the ball goes up. Garcia, second baseman, gets called off by Beeman. Now we have seen with the the new construction a lot of the the shadows that we saw maybe last year don't cover the the field quite as much. Some some new spots for that sun to really squeak through. The second base position has always been difficult around this time of day. Mm -hmm. you give it a, about 15 minutes and it should be fine. Cam Kozul back in the starting lineup. Guy who. One SEC Freshman of the Week back earlier this month. First year player out of Omaha. I see some good season numbers for number 28. Appeared in all three games against South Carolina. Went one for seven in that series. The base hit was in game two. Ball and two strikes here with one out in the Vanderbilt first. Rustad got him out on strikes. Went to the breaking stuff. Kozul gone, two outs for Vanderbilt in the first inning. You saw a good look at the, the mix there from Roosted. You saw a couple of fastballs and then two change-ups were on the outside corner, a good arm side run. We talked to Coach Carrick Jackson about Roosted. He said, yeah, really good fastball, some good carry, but really just a, a three-pitch guy can throw him in any count and really just a good all-around pitcher trying to keep these batters off balance. Alan Espinall was in the DH role on Tuesday. Back behind the plate in his familiar spot tonight, the senior. Just had a fantastic season. OPS just short of four digits and good numbers across the board. A swing and a miss, one and one. For the final game of that series against South Carolina, Allen had reached base in all 23 games. Now to the dugout to make it one and two. One for four in that DH roll on Tuesday. One, two coming up. Close pitch, strike three. Had fun talking to Coach Jackson earlier today, as Andrew mentioned earlier. Middle of the lineup coming up for the Missouri Tigers in the second, including Thomas Curry, JDR Hernandez, and Jerry Curtis. Start number 21 for Curry on the season. And that fastball climbing up in the upper 90s, 0 and 2. Ooh. Three straight K's for Grayson Carter as he fans Curry to begin the second. You go two fastballs, you know. 98, 97, then you come right back with an 82 mile an hour hammer. You saw the <laughs> late half swing. God, it is tough to hold up. Yeah, that was nasty. You had a good conversation with, with Coach Jackson, and I think a lot of Mizzou fans very excited about him being their coach and trying to get some mojo back in that program. Um, mentioned really just talking a lot about you know, rebuilding the culture and uh, accountability, respect, connectivity. I think you're going to see some great things from him. You know, doing things on the, the field, off the field, and kind of just redefining what success looks like, focusing on the process over, over the outcomes. He said it's definitely going to be a process, but guys got to you know, buy into it. At Memphis last season, now head coach in Columbia. One-two pitch, Grayson Carter to the plate, and a swing and a miss by Hernandez. Carter sitting him down one after another. Four consecutive strikeouts. Two gone in the second. 
Yeah, and the second one on this breaking ball, I mean, look at the break on that thing. It starts off right at your shoulder and then ends up on your knees. You saw the reaction there. It's just tough to pick up. Throwing strikes, looking good so far. Coming off a terrific performance against Auburn about a week and a half ago. Two outs in the second. Jerry Curtis is the hitter. He's the left fielder. Sophomore from Cypress, Texas, guy who played at Texas Tech. Like his speed. There's a fastball for a strike, 0 and 2. Carter's two strike pitch, trying to sit him down in order. Swing and a miss. Fastball hits triple digits. Chance to uh, talk with Tim Corbin at all. Um, no, but I mean, we got a lot of common friends, and um, and I am a big baseball fan, and, and uh, I look forward to coming out here when I don't have to find so many players and do that and kind of relax in the stands here with everybody else. Vanderbilt sending up the middle of the lineup. It's Austin Ford and Davis and Leneve here in the second inning against Carter Roostad, who got a fly out and two strikeouts back in the first. Here is Austin Ford. His first career hit was a home run back on Tuesday night. 0-2 pitch, out on strikes. So as you begin this job, you talk about getting players and putting together a roster and coaching staffs and all those, all those things. What are some of your priorities? Yeah, right now it's, it's, it's our current players and, and, and getting my staff complete. And, you know, you work on those things and some of the other things take place. But, um, you know, I want to really evaluate, get to know the players I played, you know, here last year. And, and, and obviously I've talked to every one of them, and, and their love for Vanderbilt is, is amazing. Thought we might have one there. I got a bad view up here. <laughs> Popped up short right field. It's the second baseman Garcia out to make the catch. Two gone. I was going to let you call the play there if you wanted to. No, play by play is, is very difficult. <laughs> and I'll, I'll never want that job. But even the color is a very difficult job. <laughs> I'm, I'm a better listening. All right. <laughs> yeah, Coach, I mean, I've, I've lived here 34 years. Nashville has changed a lot. Um, you know, as someone's moving to Nashville, I mean, what are you excited about for you and your family? Yeah, I, I mean, it's just an incredible city, one, one of the best in the world. And, you know, just the, the attraction of uh, the people, the area. Um, I can tell you one of my favorite things, the restaurants. Oh, yeah. And, and ironically, last year, I did not go to the Final Four like what most coaches do. And I came here for two days and uh, hit up the steakhouses, the restaurants. It's one of my favorite things to do here. Liner off the bat of Troy Leneve, a first base runner for Vanderbilt, a two-out single by the Commodore left fielder. I got to bring a rally, right? We, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we only need a rally, but we, uh, let's get some runs on the board. Yeah, we can't go three up, three down here. Yeah. Okay, so here's an important question. Are you a hot chicken guy? No, but actually I heard about it today. Um, I, Will Purdue texted me and yeah. gave me a couple of restaurants, uh -huh. and uh, that was one of them he told me about. Okay. You talk about Will Purdue, and one thing you talked about in your, in your remarks today was connecting with former players. Uh, how important is that, whether it's Will Purdue or, or others who played more recently in this bas Vanderbilt basketball program? Well, the former players, it's their program. Long drive left field off the bat of Polk. And that one's not, oh, oh it's just off the top of the fence. Leneve at third, thought that was going to leave the yard. It stayed up there a long time. Vanderbilt has runners in second and third on the double by Polk. Well, that's, tough, that's tough in left field over there. You got yeah. to get it up a little bit, but that, that, that was a hard hit ball. <laughs> um, but no, you mentioned the, the players. It's their program. Yeah. And, you know, especially the ones that have came here and, and for a reason and, and sweat, blood, tears, and, and, and sacrifice. And, and I want them to be a part of the future, and, and they're going to definitely know that. Here's Troy Leneve. I think he thought that one was going to go, and – yeah, he started, he started trotting. <laughs> right. Turned on the burners late. Davis Diaz, runners at second and third. Commodore is looking to take the lead here in the second inning. Fly ball, short right field, down toward the line, and it's a foul ball. Nope, catch was made. Wow. Beeman went out of sight, but made the catch. For the Commodores, no run. Commodore right-hander already with five strikeouts. The first two frames. And starts the third inning with a fastball for a strike. New Vanderbilt men's basketball coach Mark Byington is in the booth with us as we start this top half of the third inning. High for a ball, one and one. So as far as starting on the recruiting process, I mean, you know, we talk so much about 
NIL and transfer portal and all those things. How challenging is it these days in college basketball just to put together a roster? Yeah, I mean, college athletics have been flipped upside down in the last two or three years. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that I talk about is it, it, it's what it is right now, and you got to evolve. And there's a lot of great things for the, for the athletes. And I love the commitment by Vanderbilt and with the NIL, with, with being committed on that. And, and that's what it takes now. So um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's putting together a team, but, but it's not the same as it used to be. you got to yeah. be really smart about it. Here's Carter's 2-2 pitch. Called third strike. He sits down Garcia. That is six consecutive strikeouts. The hard-throwing Commodore right-hander. One gone in the third. And with that one, he uses the fastball. Been going with the curveball a lot on the strikeouts, but then that's 98 just painted on the outside corner. And Coach, I mean, you, you talk with, the, you know, a lot of different you know, athletic directors. I mean, talk about Candace, you know, being able to talk with her. She knows the game. I mean, she has played the game. Like, just talk about how different it was talking with her as opposed to some other folks. Yeah, it really is different. It's unique. And, you know, the fact that she's, she's played, she understands basketball. She understands what's really good basketball. And, and one of the things that, that really impresses, you know, when you first meet her and you understand her energy level and her enthusiasm, I mean, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I was around her for 30 seconds, and I was like, I, was like, I would love to work for her because I think she'd be a great boss. Foul to the backstop by Corona, two balls and one strike. Had you been to Memorial Gym before or spent any time here on this campus? I have. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I came here as assistant coach. And sometimes the years pass me, and I don't remember it being very good. I, I think Kevin Stallings was the coach. <laughs> so it, it, it's been a little bit. Called off to make it two and two. Corona, the number eight hitter in the batting order for Missouri. Tiger first baseman. Visiting with Vanderbilt head basketball coach Mark Byington. Just announced officially today here on campus next door at Memorial Gym. Called off, stays two and two. Yeah, Kevin mentioned Memorial. I mean, Memorial Magic, how do we get back to that Memorial Magic? You mentioned a little bit about it in your press conference with the, the fans, with the students. Yeah, how do we get back there? Yeah, I mean, first thing is, you know, we got to play the right way basketball-wise, and it's got to be something the fans like to watch, you know, entertaining. they got to understand that a team's competing and playing hard. Um, but one of the things also I want to get back is I want the students to come and support. Bouncer toward Davis, the short flip to first, two outs. I mean, there's no energy like like college students' energy. Oh yeah, and and so that they can they can change the whole environment in there. And you know, starting this summer and, and even you know, a little bit of time here in the spring, I'm going to get out and and go ahead and start paving the path to get them over to Memorial. Coach Byington, thanks so much for uh, coming and hanging out with us for a few minutes. Congratulations again on the job, and really looking forward to uh, to what's ahead for the program. Yeah, thank you. It's exciting. It's great to be with you guys. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coach Byington, joining us here in the booth for. Inning or so. Appreciate his time and fun to hear his remarks today as he was introduced over next door this afternoon. Drew Culberson is the hitter. He's the shortstop for this Missouri team and out in front to make it one and one. Zoo finally put a ball in play after Carter had sat down six in a row. Break even pitch, a swing and a miss. You really like uh, Coach Byington's enthusiasm, oh, don't you? And, I mean, he, he had me ready to roll this afternoon. Yeah. He was talking about players being seeing him in the tunnel and saying, hey, it'd be nice if we could play a basketball game today. I sort of felt the same way. One, two count to Culberson. Carter tries to face the minimum through the first three innings. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Just short of 100. Seven strike. Smacked to center field off the bat of Bastine, but lined right at Pier. Makes the catch. One out. A nice hack by Bastine just you know, right at Pier. Not a ton of offense so far. I mean, Got to give a lot of credit to both pitchers, you know, keeping the ball down and you know, mixing up the pitch as well. R.J. Austin is 0 for 1. He flat out to right his first at bat.
Coming in among the leaders in a few categories in the SEC. Second in stolen bases with 15 and tied for seventh in hits with 36 entering this weekend series. Foul ball to make it one and one. We're talking to Tim Corbin on Monday night about RJ playing first base and just how he's still finding his way mm -hmm. at, at first and we've seen him moved around a bit. Back out in center field and has his first knock of this series. Base hit the left with one out. But that right there, Kevin, is why he plays multiple positions. You gotta find a way to keep his bat in the lineup. And such a great job at the top of the order. And finds his way back on first base. Cam Kozial 0 for 1, a strikeout his first time up. Now the fun begins with Austin at first, who mentioned 15 steals and 18 tries. Rustad out of the stretch. He got some help from his right fielder to end that first inning. Jackson Beeman made a terrific catch going down toward the bullpen. Kozial first pitch, top ball left side. And you got to think Austin over at first base, probably going to try and take that bag. You know, Rustad, they try and pick over a little bit, but pretty good size lead. Throw will keep him close. You'll see Austin get a pretty big lead, try and draw a throw over, get a look at it, and then you know get a maybe of a bigger lead if he doesn't go. If he doesn't pick, you see him trying to take that bag. Long pause. Now to the plate. Austin Bluff's going, and Koch will take strike two. That's a nice job there by Rustad. Even if he's not going to pick over, it just causes Austin to get out of that rhythm, get a little flat-footed, and then able to deliver a good strike. 0-2 oh, the count to Kojul. All ball to stay alive. Interesting, too, how Corona is holding Austin over at first base, not really necessarily hugging the bag. He comes a couple steps off and plays in front. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, well, I didn't know if there was a runner on second base. I was kind of confused at that, uh, that positioning there. Pitch just inside, one and two. Another look. That a little pretty run. good. Yeah, hey. I thought that caught the plate. That Kojul kind of knee buckle looked like he was going back into the dugout, but gets a second chance here. One, two. Newstad delivers over to first. Talked about his last time out. That was against Kentucky last weekend. They went to extra innings. He really pitched well the first three innings he was out there, but then the Wildcats got to him in the 11th inning. 1-2 pitch, bounce to the right side. The only play will be to first. He saw Garcia look towards second, but made the wise choice. He throws out Kozil. Two outs with Austin moving up 90 feet. It's a good pitch there. Got the ground ball he wanted. Just a little bit to the left of Garcia. Just thought about you know, starting that double play, but yeah, you know, just taking care of the baseball, making the easy out. And that was something that uh, Carrick Johnson mentioned is you know, everybody gets so hyped up about the, the talent level in the SEC, but more than anything, it's just guys that play good, solid baseball and don't make mistakes. Like the team that makes the less amount of mistakes and takes care of the baseball is usually one that's going to win. Then you roll in that, the talent level, and that's why this league is so tough. But it's just guys that are very consistent. Something he's really trying to do with this Missouri team is just make sure they play good, sound baseball. One ball count to Alan Espinall. 0 for 1, called out on strikes to wrap up the first. Liner left field, gets down for a base hit. Austin waved to the plate. Throw coming in way off line. RJ scores easily. Espinal goes to second. The Commodores take a 1-0 lead in the third. Nice job by Austin just going right on that pitch. Turned on the burners. And it was a pretty good pitch there by Rusta. A nice job by Espinal going down and getting it. 
and the, the throw by Curtis just airmailed the, uh, the cutoff guy as well as Hernandez, the, the catcher. So Espinal able to go up an extra 90. Espinal takes second on the throw. Here's Matt Austin for it, 0 for 1. Struck out in his first at bat. Jack swing foul at the plate for the freshman first baseman. Remember seeing him play some back in the fall, and mm -hmm. you know, Vanderbilt did some scrimmage work, and I thought he was pretty impressive, and we just haven't seen him very much this first month of the season. Got in there on Tuesday night, hit one straight out the front door for a home run. One strike count. Big swing 0-2. Yeah, it's a big physical left-handed bat, and there's a number of guys in this Commodore bench that can insert themselves and make an impact. It's a good problem to have if you're Tim Corbin. Guy from South Florida, he was the Broward County Hitter of the Year. Now trying to give Vanderbilt another run. He can't do it as Roostad fans Austin Fort to wrap up the couple runs in that Georgia Tennessee series. Yeah, just a few. Especially at Tennessee. Uh huh. Grayson Carter has made his way through the lineup, only facing nine hitters. Jackson Beeman walked in the first inning, but after stealing a base, was out in an interference call when Trevor Austin fell across the plate on strike three. Over to Vastine, a little bit of a bobble, regathers and throws out Beeman to begin the fourth. It looked like this, and I got the tweener hop. Able to keep it in front. Vastine very sure handed over there at shortstop. It was really good. It's been in there for every game so far. In the middle of that Vanderbilt infield. We're talking about Vastine and Davis, the only two players now to start all 27 games. Here's Trevor Austin, 0 for 1. We talked about that strikeout, and it turned into basically a double play. His momentum took him across the plate as Espinal was making the throw to second, and both were out. Austin and the base runner Beeman. A good experienced player in this Missouri program. High and inside, three balls and no strikes. Carter needs a strike, able to use the mid-90s fastball to get it. Three and one. Hey, look through this lineup, Kevin. There's a lot of a lot of freshmen, a lot of transfers, but a guy like Austin, a lot of ABs for the Mizzou. Another chance for Vastine. Nice friendly hop, and he throws out Austin to gone. Now he got the ground ball, but I do like the swing there from Austin. I mean, he had a 3-1 count, got a 96 mile an hour fastball, just a little bit out in front. Mistimed it, but yeah, that's what you got to do. Just be aggressive. Caden Peer with two outs. He was one of the seven Ks recorded by Grayson Carter. He sees that one get away. Center field tonight for a Missouri lineup that shifted around a bit. This is a high fly ball foul. My word. That might be headed for the 25th Avenue garage. Hit that ball a long way. <laughs> he was uh, early on 97. Definitely trying to uh, time it up. 1-1 one, one pitch. Back to the breaking ball. 2-1. and one. Yeah, if you're early on 97, you are definitely, as a pitcher, you're thinking, okay, he, he's definitely trying to t time this up. So you throw in a different wrinkle, mess up that timing. That's what he's going for here. Yeah, went with the changeup. See, 89. Your changeup is at 89, yeah. so you got some good stuff. Two and two. And now you're swimming that as a hitter. You're like, what in the world's coming next? It's a fastball. Out of play. Actually, might have been another changeup. I think it was. Two-two from Carter with two outs. Full count. 
here can reach. We'll see Thomas Curry here in the fourth. Fly ball left field, Laneve. Pretty much where he started. So wait a long time and makes a catch to retire the side. A lot of strikeouts through the first three innings. Jaden Davis to start the Vanderbilt fourth against Carter Rustad. Worked around some trouble in the second. Vanderbilt did score a run on a base hit by Allen Espinall in the third. Davis popped out to second two innings ago in his first at bat. Takes a strike, 0 2. New Vanderbilt basketball coach Mark Byington was in the booth. I thought he was going to go ahead and call the play, you know. I, I know. Like, go ahead. 0 oh, 2 is strike three. Nice spot right there. 91 just painted right there in the corner. That's about as low and out as you can get. It's a perfect spot. Usually don't get uh, Jaden Davis looking too often. You see five Ks on the night for Rustad. Yeah, Coach Byington, I mean, great energy. I mean, you can tell how excited he is to be here. And yeah, what a what a whirlwind. I mean, he's up in New York on Sunday and then gets named head coach on Monday. And now he's up here in the booth with us talking to two random guys on Thursday. <laughs> two guys he's never met until like five minutes ago. Here's Troy Leneve, a foul ball to make it one and one. Single his first time up. I was talking to him in between innings and that's what I said. I said, this is kind of a wild ride for you this week. And he said, well, I really haven't really slept in the last five months. So this isn't really <laughs> anything new, but yeah, what a, what a run his team went on. They won 32 games. And this time a week ago, they were beating Wisconsin in yeah. the NCAA tournament. And kind of similar to, to baseball. I mean, he was saying how, you know, playing against Duke, you know, they lost and he never really thought that that, uh, that season was going to end. They just, yeah. they just kept winning and winning. And then it was just almost, it was over and it kind of hit him and like, man, it's over. And then you just got to, got to turn the page, but it's very similar to baseball. I and mean, you, you end that last game and then you turn the page and you're, you're thinking about the next season. Two and two to Laniv with one out. But that is so interesting with, you know, with basketball and any sport in particular. But just with the the portal and NIL, normally when you get done and or you, you go to a new spot as a coach, you really got to hit the ground running. But now you got to hit the ground sprinting. Troy Lanie sprinting around first base after a second hit and as many times up. He's two for two with a one out single. Yeah, it is a very different time. In college athletics, we talk about building rosters and the way you have to go about it. But Eve kind of reached out and got a pitch down and away and sent it back up the middle. Yeah, because before you, you'd you come into a new place, you'd get to meet the team, and you're able to talk with players. You know, have the the potential for players to just be leaving and coming and mm -hmm. you know, asking for things. And now, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff to think about. And, yeah, Coach Byington, I think, uh, got the – the right mindset. Paul Kitts one to second. Garcia trying to start a double play. Four to six to three. And the inning is done for Vanderbilt to start the fifth. Yeah, Coach Byington said, yeah, I kind of wanted to st sit here and hang out and <laughs> get some concessions, watch some baseball. But he's got to get back and get some recruits. Jonathan Vastine has been busy. Fires across to retire Curry. One out in the fifth. Yeah, you think about just all the uh, the things that go, not not just starting a new job and recruiting and all that, but just the normal life things you have to do yeah. when you move to a completely new place. Right. You know, find a place to live and you know, figure out where you're going. There's no ramp up period. You just got to get in and start running. Uh huh. Uh, that's pretty amazing. JDR Hernandez, a strikeout his first time up. That was in the second inning, 0 for 1. New team trying to find its footing in SEC play. That right down the line. It hit the base. That's a fair ball. First hit for Missouri off the bat of Fernandez. Digging for second and safe. Double on a close play. 
Davis kept the tag on, but Hernandez, a one-out double here in the fifth inning. Yeah, not a bad pitch, just barely hits the base. Right past Diaz, and take a look at the tag. Yeah, that left hand of Hernandez got in there. A nice job by Laneve, at least getting it in there and making it a close play. Tying run at second for Missouri with Curtis at the plate. It's high for a ball. Missouri team, they played Tuesday night against Illinois in what they call the Bragging Rights game and lost 11 to 3. Line I got off to a good start in that one. Bunt it down front of the mound. Runner stay put at second as Carter throws out Curtis at first. Hernandez just froze instead of trying to advance. That was interesting. Yeah, I think that was. Uh... I don't think that was a sacrifice, but I actually think Curtis was trying to put that either down the third baseline or push it past Carter, but didn't get it. Just went right back to Carter and Hernandez, I think did the right thing. You know, if he would have gone, he probably would have been yep. thrown out easily at second base. So keep that runner at second. Garcia with two outs. Trying to come up with a two out hit that would even this game up. He was called out on strikes in the third in his first at bat. Carter out of the stretch for the first time since the first inning and firing strikes. 96 on the fastball, one and one. Seen that heater climb up to triple digits a time or two tonight. One one pitch with two outs and that was going to go to the backstop and it ends up in the camera well. And so Hernandez goes to third. Ball goes out of play. It's a two ball one strike count. Wild pitch. I was trying to figure out what happened here. Yeah, it went off of the shin guard of Espinal. A little bit too inside. I think we're just trying to get in on the hands of Garcia. Pulled foul, two and two. He will score that actually a pass ball, and I was wondering if that might be the case. Carter trying to make all that a move point and in the inning, pitch in the dirt, three and two. And that pass ball just showcases how much that fastball is moving. It's fast and it's also a, got some down angle break to it. Payoff to the right side. Austin Fort gloves, finds the base, and Missouri is done in the fifth. A base hit by JDR Hernandez. He is stranded on base. And then the South Carolina had a rough go of it. Here's Davis Diaz to begin the Vanderbilt fifth. He had a ball the first time up down the right field line that Jackson Beeman went out of our view and made the catch. To strand two runners in scoring position. Ripped his pants, held onto the ball, and Diaz is hit by a pitch to start the fifth. Yeah, it looked like that ball just got a little bit out of the way of, of Rustad. He's really had a good command of the zone all night. Just sailed a little bit on him, but yeah, this is where the Commodores able to get going, get that runner on first base, less than two outs, and really get into that run game. Kind of put pressure on that defense. Jonathan Vastine at the plate. He lined out to center his first time up after the key hit in Tuesday night's win against Valparaiso. Solo home run in the seventh inning that gave Vanderbilt the lead for good. Good power at the bottom of the order. He's been in that nine spot the whole season. 15 extra base hits, nine doubles, two triples, four homers. Knocked in 21. Decent lead for Diaz as Vastine puts it down. The flip will be to first. Diaz goes to second with one out. Successful sack bunt for Vastine. 
Yeah, not a bad thought right there. Tried to bring the ball with him and get it past Rustad, but kind of gets the quick hop. He takes the ball up in the air, and Rustad able to make an easy play, but you risk trying to get the bump for base hit. Worst case scenario, you get out and you move the runner over, so not a bad job there from Vastine. R.J. Austin has scored the only run so far of this game. Base hit and came home on a single by Alan Espinal. He's one for two. Long look at Diaz out at second base, and breaking pitch stays down for ball one. Carter Rustad, his fifth inning of work, really giving Coach Jackson a good start for this Missouri team. That one off the catcher, rolls to the on-deck circle, and Diaz goes to third. Yeah, it looked like Hernandez just got a, got caught in between where he's going to put that mitt and in the process. Gets off the heel of the mitt, and Diaz able to move up another 90. And can decide which way to turn it. Yeah, he's like, do I, do I try and pick it? Do I flip it uh -huh. over and block it? Got to make those split-second decisions. A second run, 90 feet away, and a 2-0 count to Austin. Fly ball foul. Scoring position on the season. RJ has done the job. Goodness. Chance here with one out. Ahead in the count is Rustad. Brings it to the plate. It's hit to short. This will get the run home. Throw across by Culbertson. RBI for R.J. Austin. Diaz comes home to make it 2 nothing. And that's just really how the Commodore offense works. You get that runner on, able to get him over with the bunt, and I get in the run game, able to get the third base with the, with the pass ball, and then nothing too much there. Just put the ball in play, get that run home. So just manufacturing those runs with some quality A-Bs back to back to back. Two-run advantage for Vanderbilt. Two outs now for Camden Kozul. A strikeout and a ground out on his resume tonight. Been in and out of the lineup a bit. A little banked up over the last few weeks. Guy who got off to a red-hot start in his freshman season. Rustad back out of the windup. One strike pitch. Line to left field for a two-out single. First hit of the night for Kozul. That's a great swing there from the young freshman. It's a very simple swing, fastball. I mean, that was a couple inches off the plate, but able to reach out there, slap it the other way. And he has just been hitting, you know, middle of the order. He's up there in the two spot today, but it's from day one as a freshman to get inserted in that lineup, top, kind of middle of the order, it speaks a lot to how mature he is as a hitter. Fastball for a strike to Alan Espinal. As Vanderbilt's other RBI tonight, that was in the third. One of six hits recorded so far by the Commodores in game one. It's Carter Rustad who missed most of last season with an injury. But back in giving Mizzou some quality innings tonight. Pitch inside, one and one. Played two seasons at San Diego. He's a Kansas City native. One one, the count to Espinal. It's a breaking ball towards center field, coming on wow. and making a fantastic catch. Is Caden Peer in center field for Missouri? A star next to that one. It's the young man from Colorado. And starts off Danny Corona with slider for ball one. Grounded out to second and his at bat in the third. Foul ball at the plate. And props to Missouri's outfield defense. Yeah. They've saved three runs already they, tonight. That play 
that was made to end the second inning by Beeman in right field, and then the one that Pierre made last half inning, full extension. That might be the best catch we've seen in this ballpark this season. It really is. I mean, it was amazing. Got a good jump and, yeah, full extension laid out. Which downstairs, here's Caden Pierre. Liner toward left center field off the bat of Allen Espinal. Just able to pick it off before it hit the turf. Two and two. Kona swings and misses. Two ball, two strike count. Close but ball three. It was a parade of strikeouts through the first three innings for Carter. He struck out seven in the first three frames, but the more ground out since then. Payoff pitch hit towards center field. It's Austin. Measures and catches for the first out. That was a good spot, too. With a 3-2 count and a nice job by Corona. Went down and got it and put it in play, but, yeah, just right at Austin out there in center field. Drew Culbertson struck out to finish off the third. See that pitch count. This will be number 70 for Carter as he delivers the slider for a strike. I yeah, hadn't really even looked at the pitch count just because you know, he's been really filling up the zone with strikes, but yeah, 70 pitches here in the top of the sixth. Doubles up on the breaking stuff, 0-2. And, and for that reason there, I mean, he, he's 0-2 quickly. See career high in strikeouts tonight with seven. See him get ahead with the breaking stuff. That's a great sign, 0-2 pitch. Three straight, three strikes, and two outs in the sixth as Culbertson is fan for the second time tonight. Went right back to it. He went the curveball and then the curveball again. I mean, when you're getting guys that are swinging and missing on, you know, a 59 foot curveball, like you're doing something right. It is really hard to pick up that ball out of the hand. Jackson Beeman walked in the first, would have had a stolen base, and then grounded out in the fourth. In the dirt for ball one. Beeman had the bag still wanted second, but he was called out with an interference call from the hitter, Trevor Austin. Fly ball, deep right field. Polk on the warning track. Back to the wall, and he got it. <clears throat> Excellent. Six innings of scoreless ball turned in. Here's Matt Austin for it to start the sixth inning. He's the number four hitter in the batting order, and he's 0 for 2, two strikeouts. Those relief pitchers, you know, you know, you don't, you don't do much during the game. Just kind of hang out for yeah. a while. <laughs> Inside, two balls and no strikes. Eat some snacks and just wait to pitch. Yeah, I feel like they do have a, a secret snack stash down in the bullpen. What about the dugout? They got anything to eat down there? There's a line drive to right field off the bat of Austin Ford, and that's going to get over the head of Beeman and get up against the wall. Austin Ford at second with his second extra base hit. Go with the home run on Tuesday night. Leadoff man in scoring position here in the sixth. For a guy who hadn't had many ABs, I mean, he is really making the most of it. That ball was crushed. An elevated pitch, 105 off the bat. On the exit below. Again, another young hitter in this lineup just gets inserted and does his job. Jaden Davis, the hitter, 0 for 2, a bounce out, or a pop out, who should say, and a strikeout is two times up. Really good handling the bat in these situations, takes a strike. Carter Rustad's pitched a good game in his own right. Vanderbilt has stranded four base runners. It's allowed seven hits, including the one by Austin Ford. So far, only two runs, thanks to a couple great plays in the outfield. One strike count to Davis. Takes on a pitch away. The Vanderbilt team trying to extend its home win streak. 11 straight victories here at Hawkins Field. 
going back to February 25th against Gonzaga. Short lead by Austin Ford at second. Break even pitch is close, but ball two. See, that's a solid pitch there by Rustad. And home plate umpire David Savage has, has given it to him sometimes, has not. Kind of similar with Grayson Carter. A little bit inconsistent there on that left side of the plate. 2-1. Big bouncer right side and over Corona. Here comes Austin Ford around third. Here comes the throw. It's cut. And Vanderbilt takes a 3-0 lead. Jaden Davis doing the job. Vanderbilt adding a run with nobody out. And all thanks to the uh, little bouncy turf. Just pounds that right into the ground. A little bit over the head of Corona. Austin Ford turns on the burners. Two for two night for Troy Leneve, the Commodore left fielder. Two singles, one in the second and another in the fourth. It was a race on a double play. Fly ball foul, left side and out of play. Fifth year player from Pittsburgh. See that batting average updated to 317 with the two hits tonight. I talked to Bryce Cunningham yesterday. Commodore fans will see him tomorrow, but I said in these inter squad series, kind of in the, the off season, who's a, a batter that you really don't like to face on your own team? And he said, Troy Laneef for sure. And just an older player, really knows what he's doing up there. Scott out toward third base. It's Austin stepping in foul territory to make the catch for the first out. Maybe just missed that one. Yeah, that was a big league pop-up. And we're kind of getting to that time of the night, Kevin, where it's a little bit harder to see kind of that tweener sky, bluish color. I mean, especially gets above the lights. You can definitely lose it. Yeah, I was waiting to see if Trevor Austin was going to have any problem with it, but it seemed like he tracked that one all the way and was able to make the catch. Matthew Polk has had an interesting night. He missed a home run in the second inning by a couple feet, and then 4-6-3 double play in the fourth, one for two. Hammered in to the railing from the third base dugout. One strike count to the Vanderbilt right fielder. Polk has been installed in the lineup and has stayed in the lineup. Swinging the bat and playing well and right. Back to the screen, 0 and 2. You see that 343 average, and he's one of those guys you just look up, and it seems like every game he's just producing consistently and consistently. Another guy with a, a lot of experience up there at the plate. Very aggressive swinger. Mm -hmm. Extended his hit streak to seven games. Now 13 out of 14 with that double in the second inning. Long pause and an 0-2 pitch out towards center field and Pierre won't have to go to the turf this time. Slides over and make the catch as Davis goes back to first with two outs. Polk is one for three and Davis Diaz is the hitter. Fly down on a great catch by Beeman in right field in the second when Vanderbilt had runners at second and third and then was hit by a pitch, and Commodore was able to get him around in the fifth. And Rustad really used that long pause to try to keep the runners close. There's a breaking pitch for a strike. Yeah, he really mixes up the looks. Sometimes he'll come set, throw. Other times he'll come set for probably a three or four Mississippi. Really making sure that those runners don't get good jumps off of them. Left side of the infield in the air. Austin makes the play. A hundred mile an hour fastball, and then you back that up with an 82 mile an hour curveball. That's tough to deal with. 
One pitch, one out in the seventh as Austin bounces out to Diaz. And that's what you want as you start to climb into these late innings. Really help out that pitching situation for the whole weekend. Going deep in the game here tonight, Caden Peer with one out. He's 0 for 2. Alongside Andrew Harris and our producer Doug Stanton. Celebrating his birthday throughout the week. Kevin Ingram here in Nashville as Pierre takes ball one. This feels like a week long celebration here as Pierre gets ready for a 1 0 pitch. 1 and 1. Where is the bunt? Strike two. Ball on two strikes. A heavy dose of curveballs here. Yep. I mentioned he, he can throw it early, he can throw it late, but yeah, just three in a row. We'll see if he comes right back to it or tries to finish him off with an elevated fastball. Missed away. Two and two. Looks to record strikeout number nine, or in any case, get a second out. Missouri just looking for base runners. Down by three runs, pitch in the dirt. Full count. Swung on and missed. Mid-90s with the fastball. K number nine as Pierre is the second out of the seventh. Let's take a look at the sequence there from Carter. He starts with a heavy dose of curveballs. I mean, three in a row. Then comes back with a fastball in the outside corner. Then goes to another changeup, and then he finishes him off with a fastball. So you really see the entire pitch package there from Carter. With two outs, it's the cleanup man, Thomas Curry. 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a ground out to short. To show for his two previous at-bats. Grayson Carter, we talked about earlier, was excellent against Auburn. Three innings of work about a week and a half ago. Vanderbilt completed the sweep with that Sunday victory. Out there in a starting role tonight and two outs deep in the seventh inning with only 87 pitches thrown. Three zero count. It's not been a night of big innings. Vanderbilt with Single runs in the third, the fifth, and the sixth. A strike to make it three and one. Only one walk issued tonight by Carter. That was to the very first man he faced back in the first inning, Jackson Beeman. The high strike. Three one pitch, just foul. Looking for extra bases. Instead, it's three and two. Yeah, Austin Fort was playing a good bit in that four hole. Missed it by, goodness, six inches, about a foot. It definitely could have been easy double. And they're going to move Austin Fort a little bit over more towards that line. Trying to close out the seventh payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Double figure strikeouts for Grayson Carter. Seven scoreless innings for number he pitched on Tuesday against Illinois, an inning in two thirds. Hitless ball. Fast iron takes ball one. Oh, for one, a line out to center and put down a sack bun his last time up. Helped manufacture that run as Diaz came around to score. Always very steady, Commodore shortstop, the junior. Head in the count, two balls and no strikes as Peden looks to find the plate, misses, it's 3-0. and Peden's a guy who's a fifth-year transfer from Davidson. He made 49 appearances during his time with the Wildcats. That program won 113 games during his time there, including a conference championship. Four-pitch walk here to Vastai to start the seventh. 
That's tough. I mean, you have Rustad going out there, just filling up the zone with strikes, and then Peden going out there, throwing four straight balls, allowing the Commodores to get that runner on. Definitely got to zone back in here and find the zone, try and get a ground ball and let that defense work behind him. Coach Carrick Jackson out of the first. One for three and has an RBI, scored a run. Yeah, Coach Jackson said that the mentality, not necessarily with the players, but just kind of around the, the league, or around the, the community was, you know, since they joined the, the SEC in 2013, you know, you know, we can't be competitive with our facilities or, you know, we're the farthest team north. And so Coach Jackson just saying, hey, let's throw that all out the window. Let's focus on our process. You know, their, their facilities have gotten a lot better and, you know, definitely the ability to really build a fantastic program out there at Mizzou. And it's an area where they love baseball, too. That, that stayed and think about the Cardinals aren't too far away. Kansas City Royals, same thing. Mizzou's sort of right in the middle of both of them. And kind of like Middle Tennessee, there's a lot of really good just baseball talent. I mean, think about the you know, guys that have come through here. You know, Connor Kaiser from, from out that way. Runner goes, pitch hit through the left side. First to third goes Fastine. Austin has his second hit of the night. Vanderbilt has runners at the corners and nobody out. Man, just a hit machine. Oh, the fastball, it was man, a couple inches inside. Nice job going first to third here by Jonathan Vastine. And while we were watching, Austin ends up at second base. Kind of caught him napping and took off. Yeah, you saw both Colbertson and Garcia not anywhere near the base. Said, all right, I'm going to take that bag. And heads up base running there from R.J. Austin. Give him steal number 16 of the season. Here is Camden Kozial, one for three. Took a massive cut of that first pitch. Commodore's real chance here to put some daylight between themselves and the Missouri Tigers. Leading by three with two in scoring position. Nobody out. Infield in all the way around for Mizzou. One and one to Kozial. You see Mizzou playing in for the infield uh, all the way around. So definitely selling out on that ground ball. You got to think if Vastine might be even going on the ground Anyways. Right side, gloved nope. by the first baseman. Everybody stays put. Corona to the back, one out. Kozil hit it hard. Yeah, I think that ball just hit so hard that he didn't even have an uh, ability to make a decision over there at third base with Bastine. You saw the, the extra secondary there from Bastine, but yeah, nice job gloving it over there from, with Corona. Alan Espinal is one for three and would have been two for three if not for a great catch in center field in the fifth inning. Smashed to third. This is going to be a double play as Austin feels the line drive. That has been it. Carter's been awesome with 10 strikeouts, career high, and makes his way into the eighth inning for the first time as a college player. Hernandez one for two tonight. Bouncer to the right side. It'll stay fair. Austin Ford going to go to the base. Turned out okay for Vanderbilt. One out. Yeah, I got the little off the end of the bat. Nice job by Austin Ford. I thought I was going to go for the tag, but how did he just go back? It was actually funny. Austin Ford, you see right here, he's trying to, you know, Commodores don't usually throw the ball around the horn. They throw it right back to the catcher. Austin Ford was trying to do that, but home plate umpire David Savage just kind of kept walking, and they couldn't they couldn't do their usual <laughs> throw around routine. <laughs> Jerry Curtis struck out in the second and bounced back to the mound in the fifth. That was actually on a a bunt attempt. Got the bunt down, but Carter threw him out at first. 
Hernandez at second at the time. 1 1 pitch. And a second hit of the night for Mizzou comes here in the eighth inning as Curtis goes the other way for a one out single. First base runner since the fifth. Only the second hit allowed by Carter tonight. And you look at the pitch count here at 96 here. You're having some, some quick, quick ABs. You got to think if he can get a, a quick double play, I guess even regardless, he goes back in the dugout. He's saying, uh, I'm finishing this thing. So. <laughs> And uh, Scott Brown might be saying something different. I don't yeah, know. we'll have to keep it, keep an eye on that, <laughs> that dugout conversation. Those things are always funny to watch. But a couple weeks ago with uh, Carter Holton on the yep. mound, he wanted to come back for some more. And they said, no, nah, I think you're done. Garcia for two. Looking to bunt with one out, runner at first. Garcia tonight was start number 14. Missouri has really mixed up the lineups. They've had some injuries, but taking a look at a lot of different players. Year one with Coach Jackson. This is a Missouri team that last weekend against Kentucky, they played some really close ball games and a close ball game here. So easily uh, kind of turn the tide if they get few runs. Runner on the move, pitch is high, the throw to second is not in time. Curtis has a stolen base. That makes him seven for eight on the season. He has been good in that department. Tigers have a man in scoring position. Yeah, take a look at the throw here. I mean, that was right on the money. Yeah, I think that I mean, both hands got in there before the tag. I thought he looked like he was safe. That was really well done by Espinal on the pitch. It was high. A hard pitch to throw on, but what again off a great throw. Yeah, it looked like Curtis got pretty good lead and also got a really good jump. I think Carter fell into a little bit of a rhythm and was able to get a good jump. One more look. Yeah, I don't see how this is overturned at all. No, I don't either. Derek Malik is the second base umpire. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Runner safe at second base. Vanderbilt lose the challenge. They have one remaining. That's one, one of those things. You, you get into the late innings, you got a couple challenges. Yeah. And roll the dice. You don't have any timeouts left, you need to say. Right. For the fourth quarter. One and one, the count to Garcia, the man at the plate. He swings one and one and sends a high fly ball to left. Long time for Leneve to wait. He makes the play, two outs. And that felt like a big out for yeah. Carter, not having to labor too much to get that fly out to left. Yeah, I got that quick second out. A lot of close games for this Missouri team. We talked about that 11 inning loss against Kentucky last weekend. Two runs or less, seven times. Here's Corona. A ground down to Davis, a fly out to Austin. I don't think we've talked about tonight, but this is a, a kid in Danny Corona who played in the World Series last year, uh, Wake Forest. Pitch bounces away from Espinal, but not far enough. Curtis deciding not to roll the dice on that play. A nice job by Espinal just getting to this ball. Kind of popped out a little bit further than he wanted. But yeah, I mean, Corona hit 13 home runs last year and 45 RBIs as a sophomore. Yeah, that Wake team was good. All the way to Omaha. This is a fair ball. Austin Ford on the backhand. Vanderbilt. Strands a base runner in scoring position in the eighth. Grayson Carter continues to pitch well. We're through eight. Eight scoreless innings. Vanderbilt leads 3-0. Matt Austin Ford starts things off. Middle of the order are coming up. That's reliever Jacob Eden. For Carter Rustad was really good through six innings for Missouri to keep him in the game. Thanks to some good defensive work as well. Austin Ford, a double and three times up, scored a run. A 
A little bit off. Yeah, that plate has not been the most consistent tonight. Not really given a lot of the corners. But there was one, as I say, <laughs> in the mid-sentence. I'll show you, Andrew Harris. A little run on that fastball. Two and one. Out in front. Two balls and two strikes to Austin Fort. Both his hits. And limited action as a freshman have been for extra bases. A home run on Tuesday and a double tonight. Good looking left handed hitter, a 2 2 pitch. Full count. They talk all the time just about how hard it is to get inserted into the lineup and, and have some instant success because you're not seeing live pitching every single weekend. You kind of hear it, seeing it in spurts in those inter squad series, you know, in the, in the midweeks. Payoff is ball four. Leadoff man reaches for Vanderbilt here in the eighth. That's a nice at bat right there from Austin Fort. Second walk issued by Peden. Both the leadoff hitters. Fast time reached last inning, but kind of hung out to dry on a line drive to third base and turned into a double play. Pinch runner will be Calvin Hewitt as he takes over for Austin Fort at first. Speedy competent outfielder. Senior from Greenland, New Hampshire. He is definitely a threat to run among the SEC leaders in steals. And you got to think Hewitt's probably going to be going out there to center field. We, we knew that going into the SEC ball, you get into a game when you have the lead going into that ninth. Takes off on the first pitch, and Hewitt is out at second. Strong throw by Hernandez, the catcher. Hewitt goes in the first move as a cut down tried to steal. Yeah, it looked like Hewitt kind of got stuck in the mud. Didn't have a huge lead either, but yeah, really nice throw there from Hernandez. Right on the money. Nice throw. So two to four on the put out, one out. Davis at the plate takes a strike. Six men left on base for the Commodores tonight. Davis with an RBI single in the sixth. One out of three. Shoots this one foul to make it one to two. You talk about Matthew Polk being a guy who you look up and has got a couple hits every game. It feels that way with Jaden Davis, too. Yeah, very much take it for granted. This one down the third baseline and just foul. That was really close. Yeah, it was. I thought, thought it hugged inside part of that bag. Take a look here. Ooh. About as close as you can get to not hitting the base. Yeah, you, you see the. Yeah, you saw it, the, the rubber yeah, yeah, the fly, up. fly up. That's right. Yeah, right before the bag. Nice call there. And great to see Mike Baxter back coaching yeah. third base tonight. One two pitch back this way. Of course, Coach Baxter was out for a few days after his father passed away and went home to New York. Back on the field in third base coach's box. Can wish him and his family all the best. One two to Davis. Toward right, see if this can get down and it will drop foul. Beeman has been unafraid to go down toward that wall and make a catch tonight. That one's a foul ball. Man, a couple near misses for Vanderbilt yeah. this inning, huh? Same at bat. On both sides of the park, too. Yeah. Kind of indicative of Davis's spray chart. It really just sprays it all over the field. It's a great young hitter. A quiet approach to the plate. One, two. Straight back. And Davis is a kid who didn't get a lot of power five looks out of high school. Ended up going to Samford. Had a heck of a year there, able to transfer into Vandy and really making a name for himself. 
Freshman All-American in 2023. Another one-two pitch. And another foul ball, an eighth inning battle. Davis and Peden. Ninth pitch of the A-B. Really forcing Peden to repeat those strikes in the zone and spoiling all of them. Let's see if he gets one to hit here. Pass the mound. Out to second, it's Garcia. Nice play. Close play at first. Davis is out number two. Able to put the ball in play, but a nice job by Garcia ranging up the middle. Goes to the knee and slides, able to get to it, pop up. Nice throw over there to Corona. And really for a Missouri defense that has been Bottom third in the SEC in fielding percentage, 973 entering tonight's play, and also tied for the third most errors. They've been good in the field tonight. They've really made some nice plays. Two in the outfield that have saved three runs. And good work there by Garcia at second base. This is Troy Leneve. A single in the second, another one in the fourth, and a pop out the third. So their time up. Behind of the count, no balls and two strikes. Look ahead to the Missouri ninth inning. 9-1 and 2 coming up for the Tigers. Vanderbilt in front, 3-0. Commodores looking to climb back over 500 in SEC play. Continuing a long win streak here at Hawkins Field. And that will take us to the ninth inning as Leave strikes out to close out the eighth. Nobody left. Just today and, and super efficient. And gets early in the count, gets ahead of the hitters, and yeah, that's why he's pitching here in the ninth. We saw him come off in that mid-inning and stop, talk to uh, pitching coach Scott Brown. Scott Brown said, you feeling good? You want it? And he said, oh, yeah, I want it right back out there. Juju Stevens is the pinch hitter for Missouri. He's a junior from Connecticut. Batting for Drew Culbertson to begin the ninth. He sees a mid-90s fastball to make it one and two. Yeah, that's a 96 at 103 pitches. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Ten strikeouts for Carter, looking for number 11. That one out of play. A spot where Tim Corbin and Scott Brown had to shuffle their starting rotation. They installed Carter to make the game one start, and he has delivered big time for Vanderbilt tonight. Out on strike, oh. breaking pitch for out number one. One of the best sliders we've seen tonight, goodness. I mean, check out the vertical break and the linear break on this thing. I don't know how you hit that. The 11 Ks on the night for Carter. A few defensive changes, Jacob Humphrey Installed in right field, Calvin Hewitt in center, and Polk goes to left with R.J. Austin now at first base. One out to the top of the order for Jackson Beeman, 0 for 2 with a walk. He walked to start the game, and that's been the only one issued by Grayson Carter tonight. One strike pitch in the dirt. Two ball, one strike count. Beeman now, Trevor Austin coming up next. The Missouri ninth. See what he's done in SEC play to go with his outstanding effort against Auburn a week and a half ago. I'd say that's pretty good. That is. Only five hits, goodness. Excellent. Three and one. And you got to think, like, what a blessing to have a guy like Carter out there for your first start in this SEC series, allow that bullpen to be super rested. And gotta give a lot of credit to Mizzou too. Not a lot of pitchers used in this game. Needs a strike, gets it on a check swing foul. Yeah, you get that good start in that first game, it just sets up your whole weekend. Especially going this deep into a game. A payoff pitch, see that pitch count at 111. 
One out in the ninth. Smack back up the middle. Only the third hit of the game for Missouri. Tigers have a one-out base runner. It was still a close game. Only 3-0 here in the ninth inning. Yeah, there hadn't been a lot of offensive action from Mizzou, but yeah, this is still a very... One of the big threats in this Missouri lineup is Trevor Austin, and the first pitch from Genther goes to the backstop, allowing Bima to go to second with one out. I'd say he hit the bowl there. <laughs> Uncharacteristic uh, air mail there from, from Ryan Ginther. See if he can dial it back in here. Hey, you, know, you come out of the bullpen in a situation <laughs> like this, you're all charged up. And you can settle in here. Ball count. Fly ball foul. I think he, he had to get ready pretty quickly. I think didn't look like they had a ton of guys getting going as Carter was out there. I think they probably radioed down and said, all right, get hot. So he's he's probably getting loose as he's doing it. Long drive, left field. Polk at the track, makes a catch. The runner Beeman tags, heads for third. Polk ran that one down in the gap for the second out of the ninth. The entire stadium holding their breath there. I thought that ball was tagged. He's put a charge into it. Polk able to run it down there on the warning track. That's probably, what, the second or third ball we've seen at the warning track. And these Mizzou hitters not too far off from this being a totally different ball game. Off the bat, it looked like it had a chance of being a 3-2 game. A quick little message for Ryan Gither from our plate umpire, David Savage. Caden Peer, this one goes to the backstop. Runner coming down and will score on the wild pitch to break up the shutout as Beeman comes in to make it three to one. Another ball kind of air mailed. Uh, arm side from Ginther. And I think uh, Espino might have had a shot here. It would have been close if he would have flipped it, but I don't think he was expecting Ginther to be Right there, he tried to take it himself. And nonetheless, nobody on, go back to work here. Pass ball. Scored against Espinal. Pitch outside, two balls and no strikes. Caden Pierre, 0 for 3, but a fantastic catch in center field to show for his night. Ginther throws the strike to make it 2 and 1. Well, the name of the game is get the final out and get a win. If you're Vanderbilt, Missouri trying to keep the game alive. 2-1 pitch, 2-2. Two and two. He's gone with the fastball. It's me if you see the uh, left-on-left left slider here from Ginther to try and finish off the game. One strike away from a fourth conference win, the 2-2 two -two pitch. Testing out the padding behind the plate, three and two. Try to regather for a payoff pitch with two outs. Pierre at the plate and Genther on the mound. Ball four. Inches from being a game finishing strikeout. Instead, it's a two out walk. Yeah, crowd didn't like it, but yeah, that was a good bit off the plate. Nice, nice spot, but a nice job of holding off there from Pierre. Thomas Curry represents the tying run for Missouri here in the ninth. One in, two outs, and a man at first. Right, Ginther has been rock solid. A little bit of struggle here in the ninth. Check to see what Scott Brown has in mind. And a swing and a miss. Ginther, who recorded his first win of the 2023 season in Columbia last year against Missouri. Made two appearances in that series and 
delivers a strike to make it 0-2. Yeah, I think by now that, that arm's nice and loosed up from, uh, <laughs> from the pin from Ginther. Let's see what he comes with here. 0 oh 2, another chance to close it out with two outs. Down for ball one. Trying to get that 27th out. Ball and two strikes. And that's all. Commodores take game one as Ginther fans Curry to finish it off. 3-1 the final.